It's time for another episode of a seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 36. A fine day for a change. Now it has stopped raining, at last I can paint the boiler cladding outside on the garden bench. In this episode, I show silver soldering the water gauge blowdown pipes and fitting the regulator, then finally painting the ash pan and grate assembly. It's been a while since I had all the paint removed from the boiler cladding, and because of the damp weather, even in my workshop, there is some rust appearing on the metal sheets. There's so little rust that it's not really important. You can see in this clip that some of the original rust that was underneath the paint can still be seen. So I need to rub down these panels, first of all with Scotch-Brite to remove the surface rust, and then for the heavier rust I use some emery cloth. Some of the edges of this cladding are quite sharp, so I'm being very careful not to sever my hand. To get through the job in a reasonable time, the video is running much faster than normal. The emery cloth makes most noise, but removes the most rust, followed by Scotch-Brite, which is really good stuff. Originally, the firebox cladding was a really bad fit over the safety valve bushes. And even now it's not perfect, but at least the cladding fits over the bushes. It didn't before. Here's the boiler with the official boiler tester's stamp and a serial number, as well as the test pressure and working pressure. And now, while the weather is fine and sunny, it's time to go outside. I'm going to paint these parts on my picnic bench. Unfortunately though, it's early morning and the sun's not quite in the right position, but the images are clear enough for you to see what I'm doing. As usual, and I've shown this many times, I'm using etching primer from a company called Auto Paint Northern that I find to be really good stuff for this job. All I need to do is paint the parts, allow 24 hours to elapse, a quick rub down with some wet or dry sandpaper, and then apply the top coat which is going to be HMG Satin Black. These parts don't get as hot as you think because there's actually some insulation between the cladding and the boiler. So I'm not going to use heat resistant paint, I'm just going to use etching primer that you see here. And together with the fact that I also keyed the paint with emery cloth and Scotch-Brite, it should stick quite well. I use this etching primer on brass parts as well. Although the chemicals are wrong for brass, it still seems to stick very well. Normal paint does not stick very well to brass. The only paint I've ever found that sticks to brass really well is the two-pack type. And I can say this with some authority because years ago, when I built a seven and a quarter inch gauge Titch locomotive, I clad the boiler using brass, sprayed it with two-pack, and it never chipped once. If you're very observant, you may notice that the sun's changed position in the time it took to paint these parts. This clip shows the paint drying as usual. And while it's drying, I can be doing something else. Here, I'm back in the workshop looking at some union nuts and union cones. Here, I'm in the outer part of the workshop applying some flux to the first of the copper pipes. After which, I silver solder the union cones to the pipe. In this clip, I'm applying the silver solder too early. I generally do this when I'm making tutorials to show how it doesn't run into the joint until the temperature gets to the right level, as you can clearly see in this clip. I'd like to say that after many hours of work, I cleaned up the pipes using Brasso, but this is not true. What I did first was to quench the pipes in water where the thermal shock removed most of the scale, then I cleaned up the pipe using Scotch-Brite, as you see here. And even though in this clip I'm using Brasso, shortly before using this Brasso, I did use my polishing spindle. and got quite a good finish on the pipes. This is the regulator block, because on a Sweet William, the regulator is an external component. Which, in my opinion, is a really good design. I'm giving it the once-over with some Brasso, but I'm not going to polish it up, there's no point. As soon as the engine's in steam, it will go dull again. This is the other side of the regulator block, and you can see the two silicone O-rings. What a really good design this is. Both of these silicone O-rings fit over the end of two pipes. One is a steam feed pipe, and the other one is a steam pipe that goes all the way through the boiler to feed the cylinders. It's a simple job just to bolt this unit to the back head. The top pipe is the steam outlet from the boiler at the highest point, and the bottom one is the long pipe that goes to the cylinders at the front. 
or should I say the steam chests at the front. Superheaters are not fitted to this model, which is a shame really because it would improve the steaming. I once built a sweet pea, which also didn't have a superheater, and I stretched it to seven and a quarter inch gauge to run on my garden railway, but the comparison between the sweet pea and the titch was noticeable. The sweet pea used a lot more water per lap than the titch did, which had a superheater. The fittings on this steel boiler screw straight through the steel boiler into the steam space, and for that reason I'm making sure that the threads don't leak, so I'm coating them in something called bond lock, which is very much like Loctite 542, it's a hydraulic seal. And hopefully when I test the boiler there shouldn't be any leaks around the bolts or the fittings. Once I've finished cleaning up the blowdown pipes, I've fitted them to the blowdown valves. The actual bends on the pipe didn't match the boiler very well, and also because the end of the pipe that fits into the water gauge was annealed or softened by the silver soldering process, so both of these pipes were very easy to bend at the part of the pipe nearest the nut. Now the pipes are fitted, a bit more careful bending should make them be a perfect match for the curvature of the boiler. But I won't do that until I've fitted the cladding and fitted the fancy bit at the rear of the firebox. I still need to make a couple of fittings to hold the clamps in place, which in turn holds the firebox in place. And to make the parts, even though it's much harder than brass, I'm going to use stainless steel. Here you can see it's stainless steel and it's non-magnetic. Here is the firebox and ash pan assembly. It's a very cleverly designed single unit, which can be removed very quickly should you get a water feed problem into the boiler. I'm painting this with high temperature black. I don't think it needs painting to be honest, most of them are left in stainless steel. And even though stainless steel discolours with the heat, it still looks better than chipped paint. So I'm hoping that this paint stays where it is. You are currently watching the paint on the firebox assembly drying in the outer part of the workshop. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.